Good day grade 11s, welcome to your second lesson. In this lesson we're going to be carrying on with the long questions in the control test that I've placed in the system. Right, so it says question 2, consider a positive 1.5 microcoulomb charge. It's placed midway between two oppositely charged points. This is minus 3 microcoulombs and that is plus 3 and it's 8 centimeters. Okay, and it's placed midway, so therefore this must be 4 centimeters. And this must be 4 centimeters, right? Now it says define the term electric field in at a point in words. So you guys need to know this theory, which is it says it define the term electric field at a point in words. So you guys need to go study your theory. And it is important because there are quite a few marks in every test and exam that are allocated to theory. So it says, the theory says an electric field is a region in space where electric charge will experience electric force. Okay, let me write that out for you. An electric field is an area in space where an electric charge will experience a force, an electric force, obviously an electric force, an electric force. Right, so the reason they're asking you this is basically because you're going to be using the fact that you need this electric field to work out the rest of the questions. It's kind of a hint as to what the section is about. Right, so the next question is calculate the magnitude of the total force on the 1.5 microcoulomb charge when it is placed between the two uh, atoms, I mean between the two particles, the two charges. Okay, so do you agree that F is equal to QE? Okay, that is a formula on the formula sheet where F is the force, Q is a charge and E is your electric field. We know that the charge is 1,5 times by 10 to the negative 6. Okay, and it says calculate the magnitude of the total force. Okay, then we are multiplying it by. How did they get? Right, we know that F is equal to QE. That actually comes from the definition we just spoke about. But we also know that E is equal to KQ over R squared. So in other words, we need to find out the electric field strength that this dude is going to feel. Then we're going to multiply that electric field strength with the charge to get the force. Okay, so that's what we're doing. So first thing we're going to do is go 9 times by 10 to the 9. The charge that this is is 3 times by 10 to the microcoulombs and micro is 10 to the minus 6. So it's going to be 3 times by 10 to the minus 6 all over milli micro. Yes, I'm right all over the displacement squared, but remember this is 4 centimeters. From here it has 4 centimeters, so it's going to be 0, 0,04 all squared. And if we pop that in our calculator, okay, and we clear it, and we say 9 exponent 9 times 3 exponent negative 6 divided by 0, 0,04 all squared and that gives us 168750. Okay, so in other words the E is 168750. That is our electric field strength due to this, okay? So this dude has experienced electric field strength of 168750 newtons per coulomb Okay, now we want to know what the force is that this is experiencing. So the charge is 1,5 times by 10 to the minus 6 again because it's micro times by this huge number which is 1,6875000. And if we pop that in our calculators, 
we get times by 1.5 exponent negative 6 and we get so the number 25,31 newtons. So that's 25,31 newtons, but that's only due to this charge. Obviously, it also experiences a charge, a force due to this charge. So we need to times this by two, and we end up with 50, comma 62 newtons, and that is the force it experiences due to both these charges. This charge is repelling it and this charge is pulling it, okay? So that is the force it is experiencing due to both charges. Now it says, would the 1.5 microcoulomb charge have a greater than, equal than or less potential energy held one centimeter away from it? In other words, let me just erase some stuff. Right, if I move this up, so this, it says that the positive 1.5 microcoulomb charge was actually held one centimeter away from this. So in other words, it was held only one centimeter away from the positive microcoulomb, compared to being held one centimeter away from that. In other words, they're saying, would the one plus positive one charge of a greater, equal, or less potential energy when held one centimeter away from the positive three microcoulomb charge compared to being held one centimeter away from the minus three? And the answer is it will have a greater charge. It will have greater potential energy. And why is that? Because there is more work getting done to move the positive to to be converted to kinetic energy. Okay, in other words, we need to do more work to get it there. Okay, because we're going to be pushing against the positive. So it's going to have greater potential energy. Right, let's look at the next question. 2.3 says, consider the diagram below not drawn to scale. So we've got minus Q2, which is minus 6 times by 10 to the minus 6, because it's microcoulombs, 10 to the minus 6 coulombs. We've got Q1, which is 4 times by 10 to the minus 6 coulombs, and Q3, which is minus 5 microcoulombs as well. And it says, draw a free body diagram for all electric static forces that are acting on Q1. Okay. So we're drawing a free body diagram. It says also show that the net electrostatic force, show what it does and label the forces clearly. Okay, so if we're drawing a free body diagram, this here is Q1, right? Do you agree that is positive and this is negative? So do you agree it is being attracted this way? And this is the force of basically one on three or three on one, okay? Yeah, this is being attracted as well because this is a negative and this is a positive. So this one is being attracted this way. So our resultant is actually going to be up here. Sorry, this is the force of two on one. So this is going to be our F net, our net force. And the reason is because if this is pulling this way and this is pulling this way, what am I doing? I'm actually completing the parallelogram if you want to think about it this way. Or you could even move this across and put it up that way and I've got a triangle. So that's my net force there. Now it says, calculate the magnitude of the electrostatic force between a Q1 and Q2. So they want us to work out F of Q1 and Q2. But that's pretty easy because we know that F is equal to K Q1 Q2 over R squared. Okay, so that's very easy. Your K is 9 times by 10 to the 9. Q1 is 4 times by 10 to the negative 6. Q2 is 6 times by 10 to the negative 6. And R squared is only a tricky one because this is centimeters, 15 centimeters. So it's 15 divided by 100 to get a meters, which is 0, 0,15. So this is going to be 0, 0,15 all squared. Right. And we pop that in our calculator we get 
it's 9 exponent 9 times 4 exponent negative 6 times 6 exponent negative 6 equals divided by 0.15 all squared equals and it becomes 9.6 so the answer is 9,6 newtons. So this force here is 9,6 newtons, which isn't a huge force. Now it says, we've done that in two good. It says, this, calculate the net electrostatic force on Q1. Calculate the net electrostatic force on Q1. So we need to erase some stuff here so that we can write. So I'm just going to quickly erase it. So do you agree that the net electrostatic force is the sum of the forces? Let me just write this down. It's the sum of the forces. It's the sum of the forces, right? And we know that this force here up is 9,6 newtons. So we need to, first thing we need to do is work out this force here, that force there. So that force is going to be given but calculated by again K which is K Q1 Q3 over um, R squared again okay where K is 9 times by 10 to the 9 Q1 is still 4 times by 10 to the negative 6 Q3 is 5 times by 10 to the negative 6. And remember, we don't put it in the signs because that just gives us a direction. But what's important, what you have to be careful of, is this is 100 millimeters, not centimeters. So it's 100 millimeters. So you've got to divide this by 1,000, and that becomes 0, 0,1. So that's 0, 0,1 all squared. So let's pop that in our calculator. So we've got 9 exponent 9 times 4 exponent negative 6 times 5 exponent negative 6 all divided by 0, 0,1 squared and that equals 18 newtons. So therefore this force here let me just write here, 18 newtons. This force here is 18 newtons. Okay, so now I can redraw this, okay? So do you agree that we've got a force this way of 18 newtons and a force up of 9 newtons? Because I'm just translating that one to there. So therefore, we want to find the results. And so what can we use? We can use Pythagoras. So I'm going to work over here on the left-hand side, and I'm going to say, well, if net is equal to the square root of 9 squared plus 18 squared and again I'm going to get out my calculator sorry that was 9.6 I don't know where I'm getting 9 9.6 newtons okay 9 point oh let me just erase this okay so, pause. so that's 9 comma 6 squared plus 18 squared so let's get out our calculator and we say okay fine we need to clear it. Then we go square root of 9.6 squared plus 18 squared all equals 20 comma 4. 20 comma 4 newtons. Okay, so the resultant here is 20 comma 4 newtons, or you could write it here. But we haven't finished because a force is a vector. And in order to finish a vector, what do we need? We not just need magnitude, we also need direction. We need direction. So we need to find this angle here. We need to find that angle. So we're going to use Sokotoa. Sokotoa. And we've got, we always work with what we worked out first in case we made multiple errors. So this is 9 comma 6 and this is 18. So we've got the opposite and we've got the adjacent. So we're going to use tan. So we're going to go tan of theta is equal to 9 comma 6 over the adjacent of 18. And we're going to get that into our calculators again. So we're going to go shift tan. Oh dear, what did I do? Sorry. We're going to go shift tan of 
8.6 divided by 18 close bracket equals and it becomes 28.07 so the angle is 28.07 degrees or so you could either say that's 28.07 degrees anti-clockwise from the x-axis there's the x-axis or you could say it's 61.93 degrees clockwise from the y-axis either way is going to work Right, and that's question two. Please join me in the next lesson when I go through question three.